a man who saves and works hard and he saves all of his life because he really wants to bless his daughter on her wedding day. So on her wedding day, he gives her a gift. And the gift is a house, a beautiful house, a really nice house, paid for, free and clear. He's worked hard, he's saved up, and he's paid for this house, and he gives it to her on her wedding day. Now imagine that the, the bride and her husband, they accept, well, this is great, thank you so much, um, we'll take this and we're going to pay you back. And he says, no, 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 I don't want you to pay me back. Oh, no, we insist we're going to pay you back. That would be insulting to the dad, and it would sever the relationship, and it would, it would damage the, the relationship because he's trying to give a gift. Now you're trying to pay for the gift. In that scenario, that's what it would be like when, when the Bible talks about the works being filthy rags right? Our works are filthy rags if we're trying to pay off our salvation, if we're trying to apply them, if we're trying to add to the price Jesus paid. Okay, so trying to pay for the gift, it's insulting to the giver. Okay, so in the best scenario, what would the daughter and new son-in-law do? They would accept the gift, they would be grateful for the gift, and then afterwards, they would have the dad over for his birthday and, and for um, 4th of July if, or whatever holidays in your country you might be in, whatever. They, they'll, they'll invite him. They'll have him over for dinner, right? They'll have him as a guest for dinner. They'll, they'll continue to do things. They'll continue to want to do things to bless dad who gave us this house. We're not paying for the house. We're not paying you back for the house. We're just doing what we can do. It's very small compared to the price of the house, but we're just doing what we can do to show our love and, and, and appreciation. That would be a good work. That would be normal. That would be what we would expect. Now, what I believe could be the false teachings that Paul talked about in 2 Timothy 4 three and four, where he talked about heaping up for themselves teachers with, for their itching ears and, and, the, and the fables, is a scenario more like this. You receive the gift, and then you do nothing but talk about how great this gift is. And then when dad uh, calls up and says, hey, uh, you know, my birthday's next week. Oh, no, that's okay. We don't want to pay for this gift. We don't want to do any works. No works. We're a no way are we going to insult you by doing anything for you. We just love the gift. We just want to rejoice in, in, in this gift. That seems to be what some ministries are essentially teaching. It's all about no works. You never do any works. You just, you got this gift. You didn't do anything for it. But now we just leave it at that. Okay, work is a bad thing. It's always, it's always a bad thing. Now, I offer any other inputs. If you have any other ideas in the comments, please feel free for what Paul may have been talking about because he, he, is, he, did, he does say in the last days, right? In the last days, it is a last days teaching in 2 Timothy 3 and 4. And he's talking about heap, heaping up for themselves teachers uh, because of the itchy ears and the fables. What else could that mean? In the last days because I'm thinking that it has to be something that's, that's catering to flesh that's wrong a wrong teaching catering to the flesh um, I don't so please feel free because there while there have been some disagreements over the last two videos no one has offered any alternative ideas for what that could be so if you have any ideas I'm, I'm eager to, to to read that but he has to be talking about something, right? Paul, when he tells us about these fables. So I'm thinking it's something that caters to the flesh. And I perceive a growing movement of uh, ministries, if you will, or even YouTube channels that seem to spend an awful lot of time just kind of camping out in baby Christian kindergarten and telling people to never leave there. 
you know, it's, it's good to evangelize. It's good to save the lost. It's good to tell them about grace. A lot of people have been mistaught all their life that they have to work hard just to get saved, say, stay saved, hope to, to be saved, never really know for sure. Um, do works like praying beads and repeating the same prayers over and over and things like that. And it's good to let them know, no, that's already covered. You simply receive that free gift. But after a while, you don't, you don't just stay there. Okay, I know John Hagee used to talk about some of you need to get out of the diaper division. Um, and it's, so it's okay to be a baby Christian. Everybody has to be a baby Christian at some point. But I think that what Paul was speaking about could be a growing attraction towards kind of this baby Christian fortress where they never, you, know, you, you keep the diapers on forever and you never, you never grow out of that. And then you want to blast anybody who has any differing opinions on, on, on works. They're just programmed that works are always bad. We never do works. We got our free gift. We're not going to do anything else now. Otherwise, that's a gospel of works. So I hope that helps a little bit. Um, so we just uh, keep pressing on together. God bless. Love you all. It's getting nasty out there, by the way. Uh, okay, if you're noticing things getting rough, even in the spirit world, it's a yucky time. Um, a lot of, lot, of, lot of bad things going around and a lot of nastiness. So just stay prayed up and be in the word. God bless. Love you all. Bye-bye.